Good morning, my name is Mike Boyden. I'm a solutions architect here at CAPE. I'm a former intelligence officer and uh, currently in special operations with the National Guard. And good morning, everyone. My name is Avraham. I'm also a solutions architect at CAPE and a former Army communicator. So over the last several years, and especially in the last year, it's become incredibly clear that our, uh, our nation's mobile networks are insecure. We've had everything from massive consumer data breaches to foreign adversaries gaining access to our nation's telcos. Despite this, mobile phones and the networks they rely on remain heavily in use today, uh, especially in like high security situations from the boardroom to, as we've seen recently, in the battlefield. Why is that? Um, well, there's two, there's two big reasons. One is mobile networks, they're ubiquitous, they're fast, they're incredibly convenient. And uh, the second reason is we don't really have a choice. So CAPE was founded about two and a half years ago to solve this problem. We fundamentally believe that users should not have to choose between security and privacy and their mobile phones. So we looked at solving this problem, and we very quickly realized that we couldn't just uh, build an app or a phone. We had to build the network itself. And that's exactly what we've done. So we're what's called a heavy MVNO, mobile virtual network operator. The virtual part means that we don't own or operate any of our own towers, but the heavy part means that we control the software-defined cloud-native <coughs> telco stack, all the critical functions that make that you know, cellular network work. What that means, I'll dive into uh, in a little bit, but for now, we're gonna turn our focus to what we're gonna demo today, which is a capability that allows you, the user, to control your identity on a mobile network. So I wanna emphasize that the technology that we're gonna demonstrate today is real and it's in use across the world today. So I just returned from a six month uh, SOCOM deployment to the CENTCOM AOR where I, myself and my teammates were using CAPES uh, technology on a daily basis. So when I was overseas, this was the device that I had. Um, and our goal was using CAPES technology to mitigate the threat from technical surveillance and thereby reducing the threat from foreign intelligence services, foreign governments, or any um, hostile actors in the area. Before I actually get into the demo, I think it's important to talk about where, how this technology evolved. An important exercise that CAPE did took place about a year and a half ago uh, in Kansas City. So this was a simulated hostage rescue with a military special operations unit where we gave the advanced force operators phones running on CAPES network. And the red team had pretty much everything you could imagine. So all the resources. They had overhead fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft. There were ground technical surveillance teams. And there were actually insiders sitting with the tower providers, all looking for these operators for um, over the span of 15 days. The bottom line is at the end of the exercise, they could not find the operators running on our network. So this was something that the red team had never seen before. Uh, and they weren't aware that a technology like this existed. And it was a huge milestone for CAPE and our technology, and it led to what we have today. So every single phone, including the ones in your pockets, have a set of identifiers associated with them. Um, three of the most common ones used for targeting are the IMZ, which is a number associated with a SIM card or your subscriber on a network, the IMEI, the number associated with the physical device itself, and your ad ID, which is used by applications to target and track you. Any one of these, or all three of these identifiers, can be used by an adversary for targeting or tracking. What CAPE has done is bundle these three identifiers into a concept we call a persona, and allow you, the user, to control your identity by changing or rotating your persona. Um, Mike is now gonna show you what that looks like. So I wanna demonstrate kind of how I, a typical scenario of how I would use this device on deployment. Uh, but before we get into that, I'm gonna first just give Avraham a call just to show you. I like to show people that this is a real network. It's up and running. This phone, although it does some cool stuff, it Get does what every other phone does. So he's getting a phone call from me. Let's go ahead and hang up. I'm gonna go into the CAPE app. So this is what gives us access to the device features that we need to take control of our identifiers on the cellular device. Before I actually um, get into it, let's set the scene a little bit. So let's just say I've been in Jordan for a couple weeks. I've been moving around, operating and I know that tomorrow I'm flying to Oman. So my, my goal is to separate my digital persona, my digital dust from Jordan to Oman. I don't wanna take any of that with me. So as you can see here, I've pre-populated three personas on our personas page. Uh, if you can see that, so there's an MZ, an IMEI, an ad ID associated with each persona. Key thing to note is each one is different. Jordan, you can see the IMEI is associated with a ZTE handset. Oman, the IMEI is a Huawei and my transit persona is a Samsung Galaxy. So as part of my preparation for this travel, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that I separate my digital dust from Jordan en route to the airport. So that way if I am under any kind of technical surveillance, they don't know that I went straight to the airport. I just don't wanna be an easy target. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a geofence 
in route to the airport, I typically would do this, you know, four to five miles out, but um, because we're not actually moving, I'm just gonna put this geofence, drop it on top of my head right here so you can see how this feature works. Confirm the geofence, so now I'm inside of that geofence. I go to my personas page, and up at the top, you can see the cooling down screen. So what's happening right now is that modem is actually powering down and rewriting itself with the all new identifiers that I've pre-populated under my transit persona. So now I'm back up on the network, and what I did is I did something uh, in 15 seconds that usually takes you going to the store to purchase a new SIM card, um, going to go buy a new device, uh, and then giving over a bunch of personal information that can make you uh, an easy target. We've seen how many hacks happen across the telco space. So all of that just took me 15 seconds and I did it in the palm of my hands. What I'm gonna do now is I'll typically uh, operate with these tra this transit identifiers or persona all the way to the airport and throughout my time in the airport. And then as soon as I touch down to my target location, Oman in this case, I'm going to immediately switch to that persona. So again, you're gonna see that, that modem breaking down and rewriting itself. So now what's gonna happen is when I come back up on the, the network, I'm associated with new um, digital persona and identifiers that have never before been seen. So I can be pretty confident that I'm not under any technical surveillance. And I can go ahead and create as many personas as I need to and rotate manually or via geofence whenever I need to, to if I ever get the feeling that I am under any kind of surveillance. So to end this out, let's go ahead and just give Abraham one more call. And the thing here is, you're gonna notice my phone number did not change, but all of my identifiers did, and it just allows the operator to take control of their digital identity. And something I'd like to point out is this is a non-rooted, normal Android phone. It's got all the normal phone features. It operates just as a normal phone does, but it allows you to control your identity. So what, what lets this happen? That's that mobile network core. It's a software-defined cloud-native core that we have built over the last two and a half years. That does everything from user authentication, SIM provisioning, call routing, data connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. We built it, it's deployed, our network is live nationwide, we support roaming ac across the world. Now, about a year and a half ago, uh, Guam was attacked by a Chinese state actor, Volt Typhoon, uh, which compromised a bunch of critical infrastructure in Guam, including the, the telco environment there. In partnership with the Navy, CAPE, we took our software-defined mobile core, we lifted and shifted it over to Guam and deployed it there. And long story short, we were able to secure the telco environment even when the underlying infrastructure was insecure. Now, this is a capability um, that isn't just some you know, boutique, unique thing that we've developed just for the Department of Defense or the United States government. Uh, our network is live nationwide, and we believe that every American uh, consumer, you know, you in the audience, your parents, your family, whoever it may be, has the same right to uh, security and privacy. And you could go to the App Store or the Play Store, download the app, and get connectivity through CAPE today. Uh, there's a lot more we'd like to talk about, but of course, we're limited on time, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to come up to us afterwards. Thank you.